when I say I take the opportunity, you know. Um, whatever you discover of yourself, of truth, that stays with you. Whatever you have given to the untruth, you see, that can also stay with you, but it naturally should leave. Whatever you discover of the truth within you, that will always uplift and always be building inside the truth. Uh, what, whatever we support that is not true, can also live with you, but it, it doesn't support uh, the joy of life, if we are living with too much personhood, too much personal attention, and giving importance to personal stuff. And this is why I would want to emphasize, in my view, that so strong is the focus on uh, liberation. No? Not because the world is horrible, and so it is horrible too, and it is beautiful too, but because the opportunity is here to wake up. And wake up means to really see without prejudice, to see without distortion, to live in love and truth, with respect and appreciation for each other and this planet and for God no? and the Self. This level, I don't want to make speech about it. Why is it not a speech? Because it is a communion, a communicating of what is important to us and ought to be important to each one. You know? Because I would love you to see uh, yourself as I see you, This is what my aim is, to, to, to become, or to, to throw off the things that inhibit your beauty and your spontaneity, to be who I know you are, and who I take you to be. And this is something that is really at the very heart of satsang, and uh, in this way, because I know who you are, what you are, is not different from what I am, I have to respect you and love you. And this love is a love that makes that which is true keep uh, flourishing in, 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 in our lives. You know? So whether you are here, uh, I think everybody who come here, or who I have the opportunity to see in my life, that is my uh, connection in the moment or onwards. That's my connection. Connection. That's what I um, I offer in my existence, uh, and I encourage you, invite you to the same level of living true to yourself. And so, and uh, you know, there's not a lot that you have to do. Uh, there's an attitude you must have, and God does the rest. The God in you. It's not so much like the way that we work, uh, like a beast of burden or something, but that if your attitude is right, uh, then the supreme is flowing in that, and you'll be surprised. Because our minds make so much troubles, and put so much projections and complicatedness in front of us, that you think that you have to work through all of that to get to something, whereas it's so simple. You know, I shared with you a story, an account of Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, uh, when he said, you know, because we have read uh, some of you, I hope to bring more of these books here. Uh, the story, uh, the, the 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 book I am that by discourses and talks with Sri uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj, and uh, you know, the book is full, every page, every word of wisdom. 
But what I picked out is when he said, you know, that because he was being questioned by someone who said, you know, like effectively, where do you get all this knowledge from? Because he seemed to know everything. And he said, actually, I don't know anything. He said, actually, I don't know anything. I simply I met my uh, I was fortunate to meet my Guruji, my master. And in living in his presence, shortly before he passed away, he called me and he said, "You are not what you have been conditioned or brought up to believe you are. You are the supreme self." That was not a personal compliment. He said, "You are the imperishable supreme." Being. Okay? Use your time to confirm that. Then he passed away. And Maharaj himself said, I accepted what I was told by my teacher. Because I saw that everything he did and say was true before. I had faith in what he said. And every spare time I had, I just sat with what he said, because I could not get it out of my head, out of my being, what he said. You are not what you have been brought up to believe you are. You are the imperishable Self. That is not a personal statement. It is your truth. Don't forget it, he said. And he said, I stayed with it. I, every t- time I had to myself, I just uh, probed into that. I just remembered that. I felt it. I just took it on. And in a relatively short time, he said, three years, I awakened out of my sleep into what is. Is this an unreasonable thing to be sharing with you? Why did Maharaj not say, You know, I know I am a rare case, there is not many like me. He did not say that. So I took his word as being applicable, to myself and to all of us, all who yearn for that, whose time has come to accept that. And yes, satsang is only mirroring, showing, you know, not the way that the mind wants to take up spirituality, to do all spiritual gymnastics and to do all these things. It's, like, it's not necessary. As I told you before, the truth is simple, but the ego mind is complex. The person is a complex um, uh, vibration, and you are not merely a person. Person is like a costume that we wear for some time, and just like the body also. One day it will be gone. And to find, while we have the time, that which will not be gone, that which is eternal, you see. Such words as I'm sharing with you, they are fading in the world. Because our attention has become so externalized that all our efforts in for many people goes in pursuing perishable things, as though this is the only life and the time you have to live the life of your person. And in a way, it is true. But as I said before, we only live once, but it is forever. What I mean, not this body only live once, who you are, is life itself. The role we play, and the person we think we are, 
is for time. And you know the proof of this, because we have had so many beliefs, so many ideas about things, and they are continuously changing. And you are the one who is aware of the change. You cannot be the thing which is changing. Even something inside our own being is changing, and there is an awareness of even what is internal to us is also changing. Find out that which is observing all these things, but is unaffected by them. That is at the very heart, the quintessence of satsang pointing. So, don't memorize. Be. And when I say be, that's not a verb. Trust that and be more observing things as they come. Actions will happen, interactions, reactions will happen, but they will be seen as a wave flowing by on the sea of life. Don't be too much in a hurry to talk about these things. Digest first. Let them get assimilated back into the source they came from. So what I share with you, that will pass. The words of it will pass. But where it is shared from, will never pass. Thank you.